in the last lecture uh, we were calculating we were doing a numerical problem and uh, there were certain comments so i am going to discuss about those comments once again the first one was note that the different values of theta 1 for the emitting surface and the values of theta 2 theta 3 and theta 4 for the receiving surfaces so let us see in the next slide basically so you can see here this is the theta 1 which is equal to 60 degree in the previous uh, for the area a1 and area a2 theta 1 is uh, 45 degree for a1 with respect to a4 and theta 1 will be equal to 0 uh, with respect to surface a3 and uh, the values of theta 2 if you take the area a2 is 30 if you take the area a4 it will be equal to Zero, uh, and if you take area A three, that will also be equal to zero because here in both the cases theta two is equal to uh, the the radiations are emitting radiations are perpendicular to the surfaces A three and A four. If the surfaces were not small relative to the square of the separation distance R square, okay, the solid angles and the radiation heat transfer rates would have to be obtained by integrating. Equation twelve point three and twelve point six. Now, what are these equations? Twelve point three. Twelve point three is the uh, equation of the solid angle or differential solid angle given by sine theta d theta d phi. So, naturally, if uh, the areas are large, we will have to calculate the total solid angle. And from twelve point six, we can uh, see the energy which is emitted. Uh, uh, so, we will have to integrate this particular equation to calculate the total amount of the energy which is emitted by the surface A one. any spectral component of the radiation rate can also be obtained using these procedures if the spectral intensity i lambda is known even though the intensity of the emitted radiation is independent of the direction the rate at which radiation is intercepted by the three surfaces differs significantly due to differences in the solid angles and the projected area so this is very very important point now let us uh, proceed to the next case which is spectral intensity of the incident radiation till now we were talking about the energy emitted now we are talking about uh, about the energy which is incident so for calculating the energy which is incident on a particular surface we need to know about the spectral intensity of the incident radiations and it is denoted by i lambda i i here stands for this small i stands for incident energy okay so incident radiation may originate from emission and reflection occurring at other surfaces and will have spectral and directional distributions determined by the spectral intensity of the incident radiation i lambda i which is a function of lambda theta and i so basically if you see the diagram here this is the uh, intercepting surface which is shown here da1 and on this uh, da1 we are seeing that there is certain incident radiation which is denoted here as i lambda i and the energy which is coming is dq you can uh, put i also dq i which means this is the incident radiant energy which is coming or falling on this surface da1 and its direction is shown by the arrow here and this is the solid angle through which this energy is incident on the surface da1 and this is the azimuthal angle of the surface and this is the zenith angle theta of the surface so how to define the spectral intensity of incident radiation so i lambda i function of lambda theta and phi is defined as the rate at which the radiant energy of wavelength lambda so radiant energy dq of wavelength lambda is incident from the theta phi direction so this energy dq is coming in the direction theta phi per unit area of the intercepting surface normal to the direction of the incident radiation so normal to the direction of the incident radiation means we will have to take the area which is normal da1 which is normal to the incident radiation direction per unit solid angle d omega about this direction and per unit wavelength interval d lambda about lambda so let us uh, see it its definition in a different way what is i lambda i i lambda i is energy incident per unit projected area on which it is falling per unit wavelength per unit solid angle so dqi is the energy which is uh, 
incident on the surface DAI, DA1. So this is the projected area of uh, DA in the direction normal to the uh, uh, direction of the incident radiation. D lambda is the range of the uh, uh, range of the wavelength, and d omega is the solid angle through which this energy is incident. Then in the next line we have taken the ratio of d q i by d lambda. So this becomes d lambda i. So this is now spectral radiant energy which is falling on this surface d a i and whose uh, area is d a i cos theta which is normal to the surface of the incident, radi incident radiation and this is the solid angle. So once again now we have uh, divided this d q lambda i and d a i d a 1 actually. So this becomes d q lambda i double dash. So it is the radiant flux which is falling on this surface or incident radiant flux divided by cos theta d omega and this in the next line we have written this d omega as sin theta d theta d phi. Now let us talk about the spectral irradiation g lambda. Now this spectral irradiation g lambda can be found out with the help of the intensity of the incident radiation i lambda i. And it is related to the important radiative flux termed as irradiation G. So here when we say irradiation G, it involves radiation incident from all directions. Means uh, you take any direction theta or phi, means uh, we are talking the energy falling in the hemisphere. And when we talk about the spectral irradiation G lambda, it is defined as the rate at which the radiation of the wavelength lambda is incident on the surface per unit area of the surface and per unit wavelength interval d lambda about lambda. Accordingly from the equation which we have written on the previous page for i lambda i which is given by dq lambda i double dash. So this is the radiant energy flux which is incident on the surface dA1 divided by cos theta sin theta d theta d phi. So from here I can calculate the value of q lambda i double dash means this is the radiant flux total radiant flux and that is also equal to g lambda and what is g lambda g lambda is the spectral irradiation so it can be calculated by integrating this equation i lambda i which is a function of lambda theta and phi cos theta sin theta d theta d phi so here we are integrating the equation for phi equal to 0 to phi equal to 2 pi and whereas we are taking theta equal to 0 to pi by t to complete a hemisphere. So this is already known to you sin theta d theta d phi is the unit solid angle. The cos theta factor originates because g lambda is a flux based on the actual surface area whereas i lambda i which is a function of lambda theta and phi is defined in terms of the projected area. So that is why this cos theta comes into picture. If the total irradiation G in watt per meter square represents the rate at which the radiation is incident per unit area from all the directions and all wavelengths, then we can uh, say that G will be given by G lambda D lambda and integrating it over the whole wavelength range lambda is equal to 0 to lambda is equal to infinity. So this is the previous equation then we can put the value of g lambda g lambda was given by uh, i lambda i cos theta sin theta d theta d phi and integration between phi equal to 0 to 2 pi and theta equal to 0 to pi by 2. So g will be given by uh, the integration of uh, all these quantities this is once again this is for lambda equal to 0 this is phi equal to 0 and this is theta is equal to 0 to pi by 2 and then uh, we can also talk about the incident radiation if it is diffuse then what will happen if it is diffuse then I can say that i lambda i which is uh, right now shown as a function of lambda theta and phi if it is diffuse it will become independent of theta and phi and it can be written as i lambda i is equal to i lambda with a function of lambda only and it's a constant value. So I can say when I uh, put this value in this particular equation here, here, 
that means once it is uh, independent of theta and phi this quantity is independent of theta and phi so it can be taken out of the integration sign and then it can be integrated like uh, previously when we have calculated the value of uh, spectral emissive power so that was given by e lambda was equal to pi times i lambda emitted so similarly here we can say g lambda will be equal to pi lambda pi i lambda i with a function of lambda and total incident radiation will g will be equal to g equal to pi times i i which is i stands for incident radiation and uh, this i i will be equal to i lambda i d lambda with lambda varying from 0 to infinity now let us take this uh, numerical problem this shows the spectral distribution of a surface irradiation is as follows so this is the value of g lambda in watt per meter square micrometer so we have to calculate the what is the total irradiation so we know that uh, total irradiation means we are asked to calculate g and we know that g is equal to lambda is equal to 0 to infinity g lambda d lambda so it's quite easy so uh, what is known known is the spectral distribution of the surface radiation and to find total irradiation and the total irradiation may be obtained from the equation 12.14 which is nothing but this particular equation so you can see it here g is equal to 0 to lambda g lambda d lambda the integral is readily evaluated by breaking into parts that is first of all we can see that uh, g lambda is varying from 0 to 5 and uh, 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 sorry for g lambda is varying between 0 to 1000 for lambda varying between 0 to 5 so this is the first integral from 0 to 5 micron g lambda d, uh, d lambda then from uh, 5 to 20 we have a constant value g lambda d lambda then from 20 to 25 uh, microns of wavelength we have the value of g lambda reducing so we can take it another way and then uh, we have the finally uh, further range is not given here so we can say up to infinity this value is actually equal to zero so the first area is the area of the triangle half into 1000 which is the height of the triangle multiplied by 5 minus 0 and similarly the second area is the rectangle so 1000 into 20 minus 5 third area is once again 1000 into 25 minus 20 into half and the last area is 0 so in totality we can get the total irradiation is equal to 20,000 watt per meter square so this is what I wanted to teach you in this lecture